this video we're going to go over the scene editor. That's where you go to edit your individual scenes, your stills, your panos, and your video. It's all on one page now, one editor. It's under the editor section, scene editor. So when you click in here, you'll see you've got all of your individual scenes down here, which can be filtered. So this is all, you've got stills, panos, and video all here. Panoramas, you got just the panos still photos, and just the one video. So then when you want to edit any of these, you just click on the thumbnail, and it loads the appropriate editor. You can also do hotspots right from the same page by clicking on this plus button, which we'll go over in a later video. So the still photos editor is about the same as it was before. You've got many, many of the same features. Um, when it loads a still photo here, you've got your red and green boxes. This is for adjusting the Ken Burns effect or the movement that happens on still images. Uh, the green box is where it will start the move. The red box is where it will finish. So if you click the preview, you can see what it does. So it's starting a little bit zoomed in and then zooming out. And you can adjust these moves or how the, how the zooms happen by just adjusting the size and placement of these boxes. So if you want to start zoomed in this green box and have it zoom out, just like so. And you can adjust the speed here. Just put in a new speed and hit enter. And it will zoom out even slower. So you can disable the Ken Burns effect altogether simply by hitting this disable button. And you'll notice that it basically it puts both boxes full screen. So it's not going to do any zooming or panning or anything. You can also hit this randomize button. That'll just put a random Ken Burns effect on the picture. If you've got a certain move you like, you can copy to all the images or just to selected images. So you could come down here, select a couple images, copy to selected. And you see this image has the same move. You can also hit this tour shaker button. This will randomize all the Ken Burns effect throughout the tour for all still images. And if you want to see your photo without those boxes, you can hide the start and end region. One other thing to be aware of here is this calibration tool. This is used so if you shoot in 4.3, which a lot of DSLRs are, you'll get part of the photo cropped or, or cut off by the player since the player is 16 by 9. So usually you lose some of the picture, usually above and below. So you can use this calibrate tool. So say you wanted to, if some of the roof was getting cut off, you can shift where this, how the still is played in the player. So you can click this top one, hit calibrate, and you'll see it, it shifts the, the player window so you can see more of what's up top. If you wanted to see more of what's in the bottom, now you can see it's cutting off more of the roof and showing more of what's down here. And then put it back in the middle, and we're back to default, so showing just the center of the still. And the panoramas editor will give you a few options down here, and they'll be different depending on which type of pano that you load. So this pano is a cylindrical pano. So the main options here are you've got min zoom and max zoom, just like before. That sets the uh, the zoom level for the person watching the tour. It determines how much they can zoom in and out on that pano when they're watching the tour. The zoom factor. This was also here before, this basically determines the, the default zoom factor on the pano. So you can see if there's, you know, maybe stuff up or down, above or below, you can actually just kind of 
put that in, zoom that in a little bit, and then none of that will be shown. Or sometimes the panels will look a little warped towards the top and bottom, so you can zoom in a little bit to take that out. Some new features here, X, Y, and Z offsets. This actually allows you to adjust your panel, uh, like straighten it out if need be. So you can move these sliders and actually twist the twist the panel around. So if your panel wasn't quite level, you can actually fix that right in the editor now. So this panel is straight, so it, it looks kind of strange doing it on this one, but if needed, this is a, a really handy feature for, for panoramas. Another feature that you'll need to be aware of is the setting start position of the pano. And this is for cylindrical and spherical panos only, but basically this will let you set where the pano starts off when it's played in the tour. So you can just click and drag the pano around to where you want it to start. And then click the set start position. And then you can view start position. So when you're watching the tour, this panel loads, it'll start right here. You can also use these pan left and pan right buttons instead of dragging around if you want, but, but they do the same thing. And the last option here for cylindrical and spherical panos is the panning direction. And that's just where you can set whether they pan from left to right or right to left. And lastly, the duration that sets your speed. This is how fast or slow the pano will take to make its, its complete pan around. So when you set all that, you click preview. Check it out, and then when you're done, just make sure you hit save. So if you load a partial panorama, you'll see you've got many of the same options. These are all the same, the duration, everything. The one different thing with partial panoramas is this HFOV, it stands for horizontal field of view. That basically determines how much is displayed in degrees. So if you're partial panorama, if you panned, you know, 180 degrees, you'd want to set this as close to possible as how many degrees that you actually covered with the pan. So you'll notice partial pano sometimes when you upload them, there will be a little bit of warping with them. You can come in and adjust this number, this horizontal field of view, and a lot of times it'll get rid of that warping. So you can also access the video editor from right inside the scene editor now. So if you filter by videos, if you have any on your tour, just click the thumbnail to load them. And there isn't a whole lot of actual editing you can do with a video. Uh, you can watch the video. And then about the only other thing you can do is you know, check the time and then set the thumbnail of the video. So if you come in here and then you hit this green arrow next to the video and it will go find other points in the video that you can use as the thumbnail. So you just select the one you want and then save changes. And then you can go back to scene editor. To edit hotspots you can actually do that right inside the scene editor now. So this is a still photo. You can filter what kind of scenes you want to edit or add a hotspot to. Uh, if you want to add a hotspot to a panorama, load it up here. And on all the editors, they all have this plus button down here to add a hotspot. So you just click that hotspot button and then it kind of walks you through it. So first you have to select a hotspot type uh, scene spot that'll link to another scene in the tour. Uh, link spot that'll link to an external URL. So if you wanted to go to a, a different website altogether, user clicks the button, it takes them to a different page. Info spot that when clicked will just display some information that you can type in a box. You determine what it says, they click it, pops up a little box, gives them some information. Audio spot. When they click that, it just plays a little audio clip. 
and video spot that is that can play a little video when clicked so we'll do a scene spot and then it asks you what scene you want to link to so we'll do this one and then you can change the caption up here so when the person watching the tour they put their mouse over the the hot spot this is what will appear there the caption you can choose your icon over here which can be filtered by the different types of hotspots and a couple new things this edit looking direction and create opposite hotspot and link scene these are so you can basically do a walkthrough style tour now so the edit looking direction this will determine where the the scene where the hotspot is linked to which way it will be looking when the user clicks the hotspot and goes to that scene. Uh, in this case, this is a still, so it's not a great example. We will actually choose a pano here. Okay, so when the user clicks the hotspot, they move forward and they will end up looking in whatever direction you pick here. So we'll just save here. And then this toggle switch, that will create an opposite hotspot to the one you're linking to. So in this one, we're linking to the bedroom. This will actually create a hotspot on the bedroom scene linked back to the, the one we originally created the hotspot on. So it basically saves you a step if you're doing a, a walkthrough style tour. Then the width and height options, you can change the, the size of the hotspot. And you can even adjust basically the, how it's skewed. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with a hotspot. So once you're done, you can just click insert. And there it is. You can then click on it if you want to edit it. You can, uh, you can click. It gives you the option up here. You can actually change what scene it's linked to. You can change the hotspot icon, change the caption, and you can change the size right here, or you can actually even just drag these in and out. Uh, the squares will just change the size, the corners will keep the perspective the same. If you click there, it's pretty universal kind of drag and drop to resize. Then these outer ones, that'll actually change the rotation of the spot. Or you can click this edit selected spot and that'll bring you back to kind of the main editing screen. So if you need to change anything then just click update and there we go. And the other option down here is you can delete a hotspot delete it'll ask you if you're sure yes and it's as easy as that now I can try a different one a link spot so you can again it walks you through you've got your caption text and then this is the URL this is where the the hotspot is going to go when somebody clicks it so you just put in the URL there then the other other options are about the same so we'll go to com pick our hotspot insert and again the same options you click the spot you can change all the same things edit it edit the caption so we'll get rid of this one And an info spot, it's going to be about the same. You can uh, put a caption on, change the width and height, etc. And again, when you click it, same options there. Last one, audio spot. And this is where you'd search for narrations. Uh, on this tour, we don't have one, narrations or music. Uh, we can do a, a 
an audio clip. So we'll just do that one. So there we go. It's got a little play button. So when somebody clicks that, it'll play the selected audio clip. And then the video spot. Hopefully the same deal here. Yeah, a couple options. You can have it loop. So when the scene loads, the video will be playing and it will just keep on playing around and around. Or you can do a click to play option so that will require the user to actually click on the video spot to start playing it. And in this one, we've only got one video in the tour, so that's our only option. And then you can and resize, etc.